A little while ago, I built this foamy eagle model, which flies really nicely. It certainly looks the part in the air. However, I thought there was something lacking. Wouldn't it be great if the eagle could actually screech like a real one? That would be amusing, I thought to myself. Therefore, I've put together this little project with a sound module and can control it remotely via an Arduino, but we'll come on to that later. Here's a clip from the video I made. I didn't just stop with the eagle sound, I really couldn't help myself. This little board then is designed as an MP3 player module and I'll take you to the computer and show you that. I've kept it in the anti-static packet. I have managed to damage one of these. Do take anti-static precautions when soldering and handling these boards. I've soldered on a couple of header strips just so that I can mount it on my breadboard here and show you the very basic circuit. Those of you of a certain age will recognise these sounds. takes me back. Now you may not think that that's very loud. The module has a 5 watt class D amplifier on it but it's designed to run into 4 ohms and this is an 8 ohm speaker. That's why it's not quite so loud. Let's go across then to the computer. I'll show you the other components on the board and the basic circuit. The product characteristics then it supports either MP3 or WAV files at the following sample rates. I'm using a mixture of these, they all seem to work pretty much the same. In addition to the speaker output, there is also an onboard DAC uh, digital analog converter output. It has onboard flash memory, 4 megabytes, as I mentioned before, the 5 watt class D amplifier. It can be controlled by UART by a serial link, and that's how I'm controlling it via the Arduino. We'll come on to that later. And you can select by putting different patterns on the I.O. pins to be able to trigger up to 255 separate sounds and there are also other modes more suited to when it's being used as an mp3 player proper looking at the board itself then the amplifier up there and the speaker outputs flash memory the main brains of the outfit and a usb port which is used to upload your mp3 or wave files the method of control is selected by these three pins here and you saw me using the I.O. pins to select individual files. I downloaded the datasheet for all of the different modes. And when I went back to find it again, it, it seemed to have disappeared. I've provided a zip file for you to download via my Google Drive, and there'll be a link down in the description. Finally then, for this part, this is the wiring diagram, how I had it configured on the breadboard. You need to put in these 10K pull-up or pull-down resistors, CON1 goes to ground, CON2 to plus 3.3 volts, which is this pin here, 14. That provides 3.3 volts output when it's fed with 5 volts, as I'm doing on the breadboard there. And finally, CON3 is grounded also. Rather than controlling it with some sort of microprocessor, I was just hydraulically grounding these pins in succession. So you I'm sure you can think of a suitable method for your application. That then is the simple I.O. standalone mode, if you will. Look at the UART guide here. When you set these three pins, CON1 and CON2 grounded and CON3 high, it sets the pins 1 and 2 as a receive and transmit pin, which enables you to communicate serially with the device to play whichever file you wish. We can see here that it's a full duplex serial connection at 9600 bode, eight data bits, one stop, no check bit. And there's a 
brief description of the different commands that you can use here. I won't go much further into this the way that I've done it. Thankfully, somebody has provided a library for the Arduino, which will enable us to use these various functions without having to know all this stuff. Again, down in the description, I'll put a link to the library that has been provided by this kind gentleman. It will support various other modules other than the one that we're using. In the examples on the GitHub page, you can use these as an example to program your Arduino as you wish. In the next section, I'll flip over to my Arduino sketch and talk you through that. Before I take you through my Arduino code, which is pretty boring, I thought I'd show you the final lash up layout. We have our tiny Arduino in the middle there that is connected to a programmed channel, in this case channel 6 on the receiver, this being obviously the transmitter. The whole thing is powered using a speed controller that has the BEC, the battery eliminator, i.e. a 5 volt supply. So when we connect that up, this will be supplying 5 volts to the receiver and then from the receiver to the Arduino and the Arduino to our little sound generator. Symbols. The input signal from the receiver is fed into an input on the Arduino where it samples the PWM pulse width. Depending what that pulse width is, it then sends a serial signal via the transmit port to the receive port through a 1K resistor. On my transmitter, if you look at channel six now, I have two switches set up. This is my sound select switch, and this is my disable. In that position, there'll be no sound, although for reasons I will go on to, it's actually playing a file of silence. If I now take that off, it goes into the first position, which will be our eagle scream. I then flick the switch up to the center position, and that will be our machine gun. And finally, at the top position there, we should get our screaming stuka. I should also mention that I've turned the speaker upside down. Part of the Arduino library is a function to be able to set the volume, which I've now set to maximum. And as you will discover, it is significantly louder. Let's see. Powering up our system. See from the red light there, our receiver is bound. No sound at the moment because we're overridden. I flick our switch up. We have our eagle call, switch position two, Here's our machine gun, and finally the certainly terrifying Stuka in its dive there. Having completed that demonstration, then I'll now take you through the Arduino code, which should make a little more sense to you. In our Arduino sketch, then, we start off with some includes. This is the Arduino player that you've downloaded and installed from uh, GitHub, Arduino.h. And we need for this particular Arduino to use the software serial function. It says Leonardo, it's not actually a Leonardo, but that's another story. Here then is the software serial set up, pins 0 and 1 being receive and transmit. We need to put in this line here to initialize the soft serial port. Initialize the PWM reading function, and our setup is quite straightforward. This is just for debugging purposes uh, when I was testing the, the circuit. Pin mode 10 as input, that's where we're connecting our PWM signal. Player begin clearly starts the player function. And here, as I mentioned, you can set the volume, 30 being 100%. Volume of 30? My word. Even Spinal Tap only went up to 11. Anyway, here's our little delay waiting for our PWM function to come. Now in our loop, we're reading the pulse width on pin 10. 
and our first check is to see whether it lies in the region of 1000 to 1200 microseconds. If it does, we play file 2. Now, this is an area of extreme confusion for many people, me included. The number here represents the order in which the files appear upon the sound module, i.e. which order you've installed them in. So this has nothing to do, if you called your file 00002, this is not going to play that. It's going to play whatever happens to be in the second slot or position, if you will, on the module. So it's going to play the second whatever. There's then a delay. If that is not true, then we go on and test to see whether it's between 1400 and 1800 microseconds, in which case we play the third file. And finally, if it's between 1850 and 2000, we play the fourth file, being the Stuka. This is our off position, although I couldn't find a way of turning it off. It, I didn't point it out specifically, but if you recall in the first example when I was just touching the pin with the grounding wire, if you hold that pin on there, it will just repeat and repeat the same file over and over. And similarly here, unless you switch it off, which I didn't find a way of doing, it will continue to play the eagle screen or the machine gun or whatever. In this instance, in our override range of 13 to 1400 microseconds, it's playing file 1, which is a file of just silence. And that's the end of the sketch. And you've seen how it, how it works when I change the switch positions, it selects each of the files. That should give you a good start in generating code for your own project. In conclusion then, a very neat little sound module. I haven't found one as, as small as that before and having the onboard flash makes it very simple to use. Uh, that in conjunction with this Arduino function makes for a very interesting little project. I hope you agree. Thanks for watching.